Hello everybody, you're listening to Ask Pastor Alfred. I'm your host, Pastor Alfred. Ask Pastor Alfred is a broadcast that briefly highlights certain portions of books that I've written or I'm currently writing that answer questions that anyone would like to ask. To ask a question, kindly email ask at pastoralfred.com For more comprehensive answers on questions that are answered in this broadcast series kindly go to pastoralfred.com and make sure that you subscribe that's way you will get alerts when new broadcasts are available as well as greater info when they are released in book formats or a variety of other formats the question for today is why is christianity all about self-denial and refusing to enjoy life. Why will God want you to make your life boring and condemn you for wanting to have any fun? You see, that's very interesting. That is actually one of the greatest misconceptions about Christianity, especially by young Christians. You see, if you view Christianity this way, It is not Christianity that you are looking at. You have been lied to. There are a lot of things that you have to throw aside. You have to cast aside your ideologies and your assumptions about Christianity and follow Christianity based on what the Bible says. Look at the Bible. You are trying to be something else that is not Christian if you find Christianity boring. If you think Christianity is about refusing to enjoy life, and you think that Christianity is about not having fun and staying away from fun, if you think Christianity is about being boring, you see, you have been conveniently deceived by Satan. It is the exact opposite. It is the other side that is lifeless and that is full of pain, suffering, and no joy. You see, let us open our Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 23. I'll read from verse 1 to 6. This is a picture of somebody that follows God. You see, and this is even before the birth, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So this is pre-Christianity. You see, Christianity is even much, much, much more. But let us look at Psalm chapter 23, verse 1 to 6, and see the picture of what the Christian life is about, the God life, the life of following God is about. This is far much less than what is in Christianity. But let's just read Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. I'm reading from the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You can imagine this life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So first of all, you are now introduced into a life where you do not have any wants. So how is that suffering? How is that not enjoying life? You are enjoying life in a way that you have no wants. You see, you have everything that you could ever require made available to you. Let's go on to verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside the still waters. You see the life that you have been called on to. You see, how can you then look at this and say that? Why is Christianity all about self-denial and refusing to enjoy life? Why would God want you to make your life boring and condemn you for wanting to have any fun? You see, it's the exact opposite. God wants you to have any fun. It's when you are in the world that you do not have any fun. It is when you are away from God that your life is actually boring and dead and devoid of life because God is life. You see, your mentality is completely different. Let us keep looking at what the life of someone who follows God is. Now to verse 3. He restores my soul. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Wow, God restores your soul. Does anybody in the world have this? 
How many people in the world can say that their soul is being restored by following Satan or by indulging in sin? Nobody's soul is being restored by indulging in sin. So how can you say that there is more fun in the world? No, there is more fun in God. Let us continue. He led me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Wow. You see, you walk the path of righteousness. When you walk the right of the path of righteousness, what you have is life. What you have is a path where you have less stress. You see, you don't offend people. You don't go out looking for trouble. You see, so trouble does not come back to meet you. You see, and you have God as your protector. So when enemies come, God takes care of that. You see, the path of righteousness is different from the path of unrighteousness, which is what you are talking about that is in the world. So how can the path of unrighteousness, which can only lead to people doing unrighteous things back to you, how can that be better than walking with God in the path of righteousness? Let us now go on to verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Wow. Imagine this. Now, don't people of the world face trouble? Don't they face trials? Don't they have a lot of bad things happen to them? If someone is committing a robbery, will they say, ah, this person is not a Christian, this person is in the world, let us leave him alone? No. The people of the world face a lot of difficulty and valleys, even more so than anybody that is in Christ. However, the man who works with God, because this portion of the scripture is dealing with those who work with God. We have not even gone into Christianity proper to see the blessings that are there, you see. But this is just a man who works with God, a man who loves God, you see, and God loves him. This is somebody who has a relationship with God. God walks with him through the valley of the shadow of death, and he has no fear, you see. There is nothing to fear. Imagine having... A thousand bodyguards, so a million bodyguards. Imagine how safe that person is. Now think about having the creator of the world and somebody that can actually raise the dead, somebody that can see the future, somebody that is the beginning and the end. As and imagine that person now acting as your bodyguard. That is what you have in Christianity. That is what you have in Christ. That is what you have when you walk with God. So how can the world be better? So you see, it is your perception that is wrong. But let us keep on reading. Verse 5. Thou prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Wow. You see, how many people in the world can not only walk through the valley without fear in their heart, knowing that they have the creator of the world walking with them to protect them and to guide them, but also he prepares a table before them in the presence of his enemies. You see, so... The world is not having any more fun than those of us who are in the church. We have all the advantages. We are the ones that are enjoying life. The world does not have that enjoyment. When a person of the world has their enemies surround them, they are in soup, they are in trouble. You see, they are about to get killed, they are in danger. But us, God just sets up a table and brings food for us to start eating and enjoying ourselves. In the presence of our enemies, all that we have is rejoicing, celebration, and joy. We enjoy, you see. So we are the ones that are really enjoying life. God prepared the table for, for us in the presence of our enemies, you see. Then he anointed our head with oil, our corporate over. All this in the presence of our enemy. He pours out his anointing upon us, his blessings, his glory, his grace upon us. His power upon us in the presence of our enemies. The world does not have this. So us and them, who is enjoying life? We are the ones that are enjoying life, not them. Let's move on to verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Wow. How many people in the world have goodness and mercy following them all the days of their life? They don't. The people in the world don't have this. So how can you say that? Christianity is about not enjoying life. No, we are the ones that are really enjoying life. In fact, life has not begun until you become a Christian. Life has not begun until you begin to walk with God. You see? So the people in the world are in debt. They are not enjoying life. They are in debt. They are suffering. They are in pain. They are 
in misery. You see, and the saddest thing about their misery is that they do not know that they are in misery. You know, somebody who is in darkness and cannot see light and has never heard or comprehended about lights may think that darkness is all there is and that it is insane when they hear somebody talk about lights because they have never seen lights or understood lights or been able to comprehend what light is. However, when light comes, then they will know that they are in darkness and they will move from darkness to light. You see, light comes when they understand the lights. When the light shows up and they understand it, they are able to get to see around them. They see their situation as it really is. So right now, the people of the world are in darkness. So they may think they are enjoying life. You see, and that is part of the deception of the devil. That is part of the deception of darkness. It is because they are in darkness, they think that they are in a good place. No, these are people that are on a pathway of unrighteousness. They are currently indulging in most sin that is bringing a lot of pain, a lot of hurt to others and to themselves. And at the end of all the suffering that they are inflicting on others and getting to return back to them in this lifetime, if they continue and they do not move out of darkness and into the light, which is Christ, they will end up spending all eternity in hell, which is going to be cast in the lake of fire. So you have to think about that. Remember that life on earth is merely, it is far less than a blink or a flicker of light when you wait against the timeline of eternity. How does one weigh the timeline of eternity? You see, what is 1 million years compared to eternity? What is 200 million years compared to eternity? And how long are they going to live? You see, how long are they going to live on this earth? So on this earth, let us say they live 80 years. So that is 80 years that they, sh they had the opportunity to turn to Christ. But because they did not, they will live the rest of their eternity in hell. How can that be a, a good thing? How can that be a joy in life? We Christians are the ones who are enjoying here on earth and we even enjoy greater and much, much, much more beyond the mind can imagine in heaven. We are the ones that are enjoying life. We are the ones that are having fun. We are the ones whose lives are not boring. We are the ones that are enjoying and enjoying and enjoying. We are the ones who are blessed, not the world. When you look at the book of Genesis chapter 13 verse 2, it says, And Abraham was rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. You see, this is a pattern. When God blesses somebody, look at Job. You see, when Satan struck, Satan took away his wealth. But what did God bring back into Job's life when he got his life sorted out? He brought back the wealth. And who put the wealth there? In the first place, it was God before Satan took it away as a result of Job using his mouth to confess fear and that breaking the hedge and creating a provision for Satan to take advantage of Job. You see, for the scripture says, whoever breaks the head, the serpent shall bite. So that was the platform that Satan had to stand on when he went to God to talk about Job and say that um, if Job did not have God did not have sorry, all the blessings around him. He will not be that faithful to God. But you see, the point I'm trying to bring out to you is that when you serve God, those who serve God, God blesses them with riches, great wealth. Thou sh shall not want. You see, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So God blesses you with this kind of wealth. The people in the world, even if they have millions, even when the, and this is just a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the world that make it to the multi-millionaire billionaire status in spite of all their sinning and nefarious activities. It's only a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the world. Don't deceive yourself and look at it as when people are in the world, they can easily do any and anything in business and make money. No. How many people in the world are billionaires as compared to the number of people in the world in general? You see? So you see, it's a very tiny, tiny, tiny fraction. And when they get that, they still have wants. 
they still hunger. So they still do not have that satisfaction from the money. And they keep going about hungry and trying to make more money. What use is it having billions of dollars, but yet still feeling the same way you felt when you had only one dollar? That is the problem that the world is in. That is the problem that worldly millionaires and billionaires face. They are still hungry and empty inside and going after more money and more money. The money is not giving them satisfaction. They still feel like they have to do everything they can to make even more money and yet no satisfaction. But you see, we are in a place where we have no wants. You see, as a Christian, we get to that place when we walk with God. The Lord is our shepherd. We, we have no wants. We have that satisfaction that all our needs are met. Wealth that comes from God comes with satisfaction and contentment. But wealth that comes from the world, the wealth that the world gets comes with dissatisfaction and no contentment. They are not content with it and they hunger even more. They hunger for money that they have increases the richer they get. It is just like eating and getting more hungry. The more they eat, the more hungry they get. So what is that? Isn't it better that they even stop eating? You see, it's, it's a problem. It's a cause. So you see, us and the world... Who is enjoying life? The world are in condemnation. The world are in pain. They are in suffering. You see, they cannot enjoy life. They cannot enjoy money. We can. You see, we do. We are in a completely different place than they are. That ideology that Christianity is about being boring you see and that christians we do not enjoy life that is that we are trying to stay away from enjoying life that god doesn't want us to enjoy life and have fun that is wrong and to address the part of the question about self-denial you have to understand that christianity isn't about self-denial when you graduate because you see you shouldn't lost after the things of the flesh you shouldn't lost about sin by self-denial i believe you are clearly talking about sin like people den denying their desires to commit sin you see when you are in christ for a christian being righteous is not what we are trying to be being righteous is who we are. For as the scripture says, we are the righteousness of God. You see, righteousness is our nature. And righteous living is a result of the nature of righteousness that we have. In the Old Testament, they tried to work out righteousness from outside in. You see, they tried to become righteous. They tried to do this, keep the law, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. For them to become righteous. But you see, in the New Testament, God just gave us righteousness as a gift because He saw that none of us could achieve it on our own. Throughout the Old Testament, the Old Testament is also a series of evidence that no man could work out righteousness from outside in. So He just gave it to us as a gift so we can work it out from inside out. You see, so now we express His righteousness. You see, we still have free will so we can choose not to walk in righteousness, choose not to do what is right. You see, but he has given us the righteousness inside us. So it is now for us to walk it from inside out, for us to express it, for us to adjust it, for us to live out the life that he has given us. You see, so you must understand these differences. If... You now have righteousness inside you. You are not in any form of self-denial when you refuse to commit sin. When you turn your back on sin. Because you see, nothing that is in you should desire sin. There is nothing that God puts inside you 
that should lust or hunger for sin when you are a new creation, when you are in Christ. Because you see, you have re received the Spirit of God. You have not received the Spirit of the world. You have the Holy Spirit within you. You now have the gift of righteousness within you. So your desires now that were given to you by God were desires of righteousness. You see, it is written that he has given us a new heart. You see, and taken away our heart of stone. You see, there has been a re recreation. There has been a replacement of our old hearts. We now have hearts that long after God. We are now to have the mind of Christ. You see, that is what's it is for us to have. And the more we study the word, the more we read the word, the more we are transformed into the image that we see in the world. The more we turn into what God has created us to be, the more that we become what God wants us to be in Christ. You see, so the word of God is that agent for that metamorphosis for us to truly become what he has put inside us, for us to work it out so that we leave it out on the outside also. You see, but it's now working from inside out. That is righteousness. He just gave it to us as a gift. And our righteous living is now a result of us expressing the righteousness that is now within us. So you see, you are not denying yourself as a Christian. When you are in the New Testament, you are not denying yourself by turning your back on sin. You have no desire for sin. There's nothing in you that God puts there that loves or desires for sin. You see, so it is not self-denial. What is inside you is the will of God. What is inside you is the Spirit of God. You see, what you will to do is the will of God. It's what God wants you to do. So there's no self-denial. For there to be self-denial means that the real you wants to live in sin. Then, by staying away from sin, you are denying your appetite and your will and your desires for sin. But you see, all of that has been scrubbed. In the New Testament, he has given us the nature of righteousness. He has given us righteousness as a gift. So actually, when you are indulging in sin as a Christian, that is self-denial. You see, because what is really inside you is the spirit of Christ. Sin is not natural with you. Sin is not what the spirit of God in you longs for. So when you engage in sin, when you're a Christian, that is actually self-denial. You are denying yourself from walking in righteousness. You see, because the life of righteousness that you have received as a gift longs to express itself within you and for you to walk in that righteousness on the outside also. You see? So you must understand that when you say why is Christianity all about self-denial and refusing to enjoy life? No, there's no self-denial in Christianity. It is us realizing who we are in Christ and being that. There has been a change. There has been a metamorphosis. You see, the scripture says this any man being in Christ is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. This new creation is different from the old creation. You see, it is not our life. It is not our nature for us to live in sin. The scripture says we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous lights. You see, this is who we are now. So for us to be called into light, we do not express darkness. How can we be called into light and have light in us and be putting out expressions of darkness? You see, it is out of the volume of the heart the mouth speaketh. It is what is in your heart that you will express outwardly. And God has given us a new heart, a heart of righteousness. So it is actually moving into the direction of sin that is a self-denial. Moving into darkness. And you see, when somebody matures, why would they want to move in darkness when they know they have received the nature of light and the nature of God? You see, so a Christianity is not self-denial. It is about understanding who we are in Christ and being that. It is about being ourselves based on who we now know we are in Christ. You see, that is Christianity. Being who Christ has made us to be. Expressing that life. Expressing the divine life of God in us. That is what it is. You see, so that addresses that aspect of self-denial in the question why is Christianity all about self-denial and refusing to enjoy life you see you must really understand this because a lot of you have been deceived that 
Christianity is about being boring and God does not want you to have fun. No, God wants us to have fun. We are having fun and walking in righteousness. It is the world that is not having fun. You have to know that righteousness and fun are synonymous. You must not buy into the lie that righteousness and fun cannot mean the same thing or cannot be similar or cannot be in the same place or cannot be related. No, righteousness and fun are related. For you to actually have fun, you must walk in righteousness. You cannot walk in darkness and have fun. You cannot walk in sin and have fun. You cannot be a killer and have fun. You cannot be an assassin and have fun. You cannot be a rapist and have fun. You cannot be an adulterer and have fun. You see, all these things are death, 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 that gives birth to more death and more death and more pain, more destruction. That is not fun. But you see, these people are in darkness, so how do they know that they are actually in pain and in suffering. It is you that is looking at them that and you think that they are enjoying, but you do not know what they are going through. You do not see. And that is a matter of a lack of understanding on your parts and skills being on your eye and you being in a position where you allowed your mind to be deceived. The world is not enjoying life. The world is suffering. You see, outside of Christ is pain and suffering. It is when you come into Christ that enjoying life begins, that life begins in the first place for you to even begin to talk about enjoying life. You see, this is something that you must understand. Let us look at the book of Proverbs chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 14 to 18. Or perhaps I'll read on to verse 20. I begin. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sins. Praise the Lord. You see exactly what I'm saying. It is those who walk with God that are actually enjoying life. Not those who are in the world. You see, as verse 16 says about those who are in the world, for they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. You see, that is the life of those who are in the world. They sleep not, except they have done mischief, and they their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. The activities they engage in cause deaths and problems for others, and what they sow is what they reap. So their life is full of creating problems for others and others creating problems for them. You see? For they eat, in verse 17, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Are these the people you want to be envious about? People who eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. You see, if you can be envious of these people, there's something wrong with you. You see, you are somebody who has a mind and a heart that leans in their direction. You, it, it brings to question your own conversion, your own Christianity. You see, you should not desire to be one of those people. You should not think that they are enjoying anything. You see, these are people who have their sleep taken away from them until they cause some to fall, until they sin. So all they do is create sin. They sin, and as they sin, they reap the results of their sin. So it's just creating problems for others and for themselves. And that is all they receive as they create problems for others and they sin and 
do things to hurt others. Others do things to hurt them. So that is their life, you see. Verse 18 says, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. So you see, this is the life of those who are in Christ. So among these two different scenarios, who is enjoying life? It is the part of the righteous. It is those who walk with God that are enjoying life. You see, our path is as a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. That is how our lives are. Verse 19 says, And the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not as what they stumble. And that is the life of the world. They don't even know why bad things keep happening to them. They don't know why they stumble. They don't know why tragedies come and sweep them off their feet. You see, that is why their life is a life of perpetually going downwards or going up and down, up and down, up and down. You see, that is the life of those in the world. However, our life in Christ, the life of those who work with God, is a life of the one that is a shining light, you see. Our path is as a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. We keep going higher and higher. We keep going brighter and brighter. You see, when troubles come, when test comes, because God is with us, we sail over them. Our success, our victory is guaranteed. But the world does not have that. You see, the world does not have God on their side. Look at Job. Job had God on his side and he came out victorious. That is the life of the one who walks with God. That is our life, you see, in Christ. Remember that I have not even really gotten into the glory of the one who is in Christ because this is a blessing that applies even in the Old Testament. You see, in the New Testament, there is so much more and there may not even be time enough today to go into that. You see, even the life of the one who walks with God in the Old Testament is a billion times more glorious than the life of an unbeliever today in today's world. You see, even decades and decades and decades after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You see, so... The people in the world are not the ones who are in any position to enjoy life, and they do not enjoy life. Let us look at the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 to 9. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. You see, do the world have this preservation? No. But we in Christ have it. Forsake her not, and she will preserve thee. It's talking about wisdom. And that is wisdom that is from God. This is something that only applies to those who work with God. Love her, and she will keep thee. Wisdom. When you love wisdom, when you work with wisdom that comes from God, that this is a wisdom that is exclusive for only those who work with God. You see, it is going to keep you. It is going to preserve you. That is our life. Our life is a life of being kept in safety and preservation. But the world does not have this guarantee. The world, their life has no guarantee. Their life is not preserved. Their life cannot be kept. It is not kept safe by God. You see, that is the truth of the matter. Reading on to verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Verse 8, exalt her and she shall promote thee. You see, this is now the life of those who work with God. It's a life of promotion. When we exalt wisdom that is from God, you see, we are promoted. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. You see, this is the life of those who are in God. How can you dare to compare it to the life of those in the world? We are the ones who are enjoying life. We are the ones who is receiving promotion from God. We are the one who the wisdom of God is bringing us honor. You see, she shall bring the honor when thou dost embrace her. This is the life of those who are in Christ, the life of those who work with God. These are things that 
the world does not have. You see, they do not have honor from God. They do not have promotion from God. How can you say that then those in the world are enjoying life? No, they are not enjoying life. It is us that are in God, us that are walking with God, us that are in Christ, that are enjoying life. Verse 9 says, She shall give to thy head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Wow. Who in the world has an ornament of grace? You see? And a crown of glory. This is not talking about something we will receive in heaven. This is something that we have here on earth. This is something that we work with here on earth. You see? Who in the world has this? Where does those who are in darkness receive a crown of glory and an ornament of grace from wisdom, which is only exclusive to those who walk with God, for those who are Christians, you see? So we are the ones whose life is a life of going from glory to glory, from success to success, from victory to victory. We are the ones whose life is clothed with an ornament of grace from God. You see, and a crown of glory. The world does not have this. So, don't say that the people in the world are enjoying life. No, we are the ones who are enjoying life. We Christians are the ones who are enjoying life. The world does not even have life to begin with. Let us look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 12. I'm reading from the King James Version. I read, When thou goest, thy steps shall not be Straightens, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. You see, this is the life of those who walk with God. We do not stumble. You see, our lives are a different kind of life. Our life is a life where we are secure, we are safe. There is safety. In the world, there is no safety. So, with this that you have heard so far, clearly that has broken down that myth and that ideology that it is those in the world that are enjoying life. And Christianity is about refusing to enjoy life and self-denial and staying away from enjoying life. You see, all of that is a lie. So now you know the truth. For more information on this, topic as well as a variety of different topics kindly go to pastoralfred.com and make sure you subscribe when you subscribe you will get alerts when new broadcasts are available as well as new contents is available that will be a blessing to you keep in mind that i do not only write non-fiction books i also write fiction books books for Kids, children's books, books for teenagers, books for young adults, books for parents, everybody. You see, but all Christian books, all my books are Christian. You see, because I am a Christian, you know, and out of the volume of the heart, the mouth speaks. So make sure that you subscribe to PastorAlfred.com. Most of my books are available for free, so always check back to see which books you can freely download and spread the word, let people know about it. I would like to say a prayer for all of you who are under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, I command every sickness to leave your body. I command every disease to leave your body in the mighty name of Jesus. I command every devil and every demon that is in anyone under the sound of my voice to live now in the name of Jesus. I command every demon that is tormenting everyone that is hearing my voice right now to leave that person in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. A of you are receiving your miracles right now. Contact us and tell us what the Lord has done for you. We would like to hear from you. You can reach us at pastoralfred.com. It is very important for you to testify. Also, if you are listening to me now and you haven't given your life to Christ, I would like you to go to pastoralfred.com and click on the salvation prayer link in the 
main menu of the sites. There you will find a prayer of salvation. So ask God to come into your heart. Also, there's a prayer for you to say to receive the Holy Spirit. It's important that you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is essential for your Christian work. So that is it for today. Thank you and God bless you.